we'll start the uh, meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee, and we are starting out with the CPA committee. Yes. And I'll let you introduce your people okay. and then just jump into it. I'm Clarissa Rowe, I'm chair of the committee until after town meeting. And these are my two vice chairs, <laughs> Sue Doctro and Dave Swanson. And they will interrupt me whenever they, have, they think I need to amplify anything. Um, mostly what I'm here to talk about is the money. And I think you've gotten this lovely spreadsheet. Um, today I panicked because I only had the old spreadsheet. <laughs> but, um, anyway, we got more applications this year than we've ever, ever had, and which is good. And we got more money. And we have a lot of turn back money too from other past projects. But we're really pleased with what we've come up with. Um, you'll see that we didn't fund Menominee Rocks Park Picnic and Playground, and we didn't fund Win Winford um, Robbins Memorial Garden, but we did fund the others. Um, and I think what we should do is. You know, do you want to interrupt me? Should I just go through a presentation quickly and, and you yeah. have questions? We, we've all seen the presentation, but why don't you go through quickly knowing that we've seen it and okay, great. why don't we stop great. at at certain okay. points for questions? Um, community housing, we're very pleased with the results here. The Housing Corporation of Arlington came in with a request for 750. We changed it to 500,000 because the Arlington Affordable Housing Trust said that they would use their grant of 250 to make up the difference. And that was really good because we were a million dollars over budget. So we really appreciated their um, working with us and trying to get us um, to a place where everybody would be happy. And we gave them a little extra money at the end of the night. The Somerville Homeless Coalition is a wonderful organization that very large sum um, is the difference between um, the rental income and what the Arlington residents need to pay. Um, the Hauser, housing, Hauser building uh, roof replacement, that is um, not as much as they asked for, but we had that left over. It's in process anyway. It's a wonderful old building that's leaking. So when you have a leaking roof, you need to fix it. And the Menominee Manor window replacement project is the second phase of our working with them. And we're hoping very soon there's going to be windows in there. The open space and recreation um, section, uh, Hills Hill, as I'm sure you've all heard about, is probably the most talked about and most controversial CPA project we've ever had. And we got over 200 emails. Um, Jim Feeney got phone calls. I got phone calls. I had people visiting me at my home. And um, what we did was come up with a compromise, I think, um, where a member of the Open Space Committee will be incorporated in the working group. Um, we'll have a tree inventory of the whole property. And the chosen designer will have to put two alternatives forward. And if the preferred concept puts the hook track in the woods, then they have to come back to the committee prior to construction um, for our okay. So um, I think that that's a pretty good compromise. We tried our best um, and that's what we came up with. The other ones are really wonderful projects, small ones, um, invasive vegetation removal, the Millbrook Preservation Project 22 um, Pond Lane Feasibility Study, and No Name Preservation um, is also an open space one. The Orchard Signage is a Girl Scout project, and um, we're happy to, to be able to fund them at that big sum. In the historic preservation um, group, we have the Arlington Friends for the Drama, 
and I believe Judy's here to talk about it if she needs to. Um, and that's going to be the mechanical system in the exterior of the um, of the build, wonderful old building. Um, we have another Cyrus Dallin Art Museum um, where they're doing more document ditches. I can't ever say this word. So you know what it is. Scanning. <laughs> Scanning. <laughs> and then we have Foot of the Rocks Battlefield Memorial. I see that Al is not here. That's a good thing because he's the proponent. Um, and the Jason House, I think this is the last project we're going to do with them. They had a very good uh, preservation project at the very beginning to figure out what they should be doing. And they have since then done, I think now five projects or will do five projects that sort of ate away at that, um, that preservation plan. Um, one of the reasons that I sent you the town hall envelope um, preservation phase one is because our town hall is not in good shape. And I sent that uh, report to you all because I thought it was important that the finance committee look at it really carefully and eventually the capital plan too. Um, because I think CPA is not expensive, is not, we don't have enough money, we get about $2 million a year. This is a big project. I, after write, reading that report, I'm not going to go back in the front door of the town hall until something's fixed. <laughs> so, um, and then, as you see, we have a tiny little bit of um, administrative expenses. We can have as much as 5% of our total, but we never do. It's usually between two, a little over 2%. So with that, I'll stop talking and answer for questions. And my able people here will help me. Before we open up to questions, how much was turned back? Um, I don't have that right in front of me. Um, it was I, on the order of 600000 Yeah, I think about 600000 Um One was from Herd Field, about yeah. 400000 from Herd Field, and 200000 from Arlington Housing Authority. Oh, it's right electrical. Yeah. Yeah. That's right here. So seven, yeah. seven fifty. Yeah. Anticipated yeah. end, including turn backs. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, six oh seven yeah. seven fifty. Oh, the yeah. electrical panels. Were yeah, the electric. Because they found other money. Yeah, they found other money. Um, what was that? The, that's the um, Arlington Housing Authority. We funded an emergency um, funding for them last spring after the fire. And they um, turned that money back to us because they got other money. And it's all being done now. I think it's done now. So um, we get a little bit of money back, usually from the um, Jason Russell House, too. All right. So uh, let's start with uh, community housing questions on the community housing project. Anybody have any questions? No questions on community housing. Carolyn? So I'm assuming the 10 Sunnyside is a um, done deal, but it, it is one of the other places that we could have industry there, which would increase tax base without services, um, having to also increase services. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering why we keep transitioning our industry space to housing space, because we've done the same thing at MIRAC. Mm -hmm. And that was a huge area where now yeah. we've increased right. The need for services for people without significant increase in tax. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've picked another spot. I know it's very small compared to that, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering. Well, I think that the property was on sale for quite a long time. Okay. And I think that this is, I've seen the architectural plans, they're excellent. And that's my field. Right. So I am, um, I, you know, I think it's a really good project. I was glad to see um, the Housing Corporation of Arlington back in the game, honestly. Yes. So yeah, um, I, I agree with that. As well. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the site, if you go by the site now, you'll see it's definitely in need of help. Um, is it in the floodplain? Because I know some of our other mixed, you know, um, mixed no, income, I, lower income housing is in floodplain. Yes, it is. You know, completely right. right. But no, I don't believe that's in the floodplain. I'll double check them. Okay, 
because I just hate to see us keep doing that. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions on community housing? All right, any questions on open space recreation? Jennifer? Yeah, I'm just curious about the math. So Arlington Affordable Housing Trust Fund was given 378, but then they also gave Sunnyside 250. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that 370, what, what was that for again? Is that for a separate project or is that sort of That's, representative of the other things? Go ahead. Oh. These two are working on the, with the Affordable Housing <laughs> yeah. Trust. Um, so they asked for 250. Um, it's to implement their five year plan. Okay. And they had several proposed projects that they might use it for. And then they came up with the idea of giving 250. I see, and then you top yeah. them off. And them, okay, it, it was fantastic because they have to demonstrate local support, yeah. the Harlan um, Housing Corporation of Arlington. So this way they can demonstrate support from two local entities. So yeah, it, it was different. kind of a win-win. So then when we had more money left over, we gave some back. So this includes the 250. Okay, I get it. So they um, will make and their... I just want to say the sunny side avenue, if you've ever gone by it, has no sidewalks right now and no greenery at all. Yeah. And it's gonna have both. Really yeah. nice. It's gonna be really nice. Yeah, it's, it's and, and 43 units permanently yeah. affordable. Reaching up. Yeah. Topher, do you have a question? I was going to have a question on uh, open space and the right. recreation. So, just so I'm clear on Hills Hill, since I'm from Precinct 15, it's not heard I'm sure all about it. <laughs> um, so, so, what you've done is you've approved the 400,000 contingent on some member of the open space committee being in the working group that's going to. Mm -hmm. Presumably, I know they said it's a concept. It's a concept. This is not the final plan. So the final plan will be developed. Right. Yes. All right. Um, an inventory of the trees, which I assume will involve the tree work. And some right. Other people. Okay. And okay. And you said they have to come up with two plans. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw the open space. Uh, yeah, I've said you know, developing it with environmental uh, concepts. One that was one of the mm -hmm. letters I saw. So uh, do I have all that right? Yes, you do. Okay. Yes, you do. Um, and I think the, although we didn't hold back the money, they have to come back to us if they're putting the pump track where they, we don't believe it should be. Okay. Um, can I make a comment about this? Of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to drag it on. Um, so unfortunately, the feasibility plan had some scary pictures. Yes. Which really the community doesn't want. Yeah, it had point. like trees cleared and, and it had a, among the um, possibilities was an asphalt pump track. And none of the mountain bikers in the community that we've spoken with want one or have heard of one. <laughs> so I think the feasibility plan, which was done by a group that's probably not going to be the contract no, um, designer. Um, it, it, it caused a lot of fear. Right. Um, so, yeah, well, it'll yeah. Be important that whatever yeah. comes out the other mm -hmm. end doesn't, right. doesn't cause such conflict. So, the input was really important, like all the community. Yeah, well, I because, saw the, yeah, the one that you had to, it was good to know what was frightening <clears throat> people about the yeah, project. Yeah, I mean, the leader, and Mr. McBride, I think it was. Yes, yeah. He had pretty measured comments. He, had, he yeah. was wonderful. I thought he was yeah. very, very civil and, and helpful. Yeah. I really um, enjoyed working with him. And I think the, the most important thing about Hills Hill is that there will be, the Park and Recreation Commission has to hire a landscape architect. I thought the plan that was shown to us and to you all was awful, honestly. I mean, as the graphics were terrible, yeah. but it was just, it was, they were trying to sell a product and they weren't um, sensitive to the site at all. They didn't, it could have been anywhere. And um, so, you know, we know that they're going to hire a landscape architect. It makes me happy. And the group that's really gotten involved is NEMBA, the New England Mountain Biking Association. And um, I know some of them personally, and they're very into sustainable trail design, and they care about the wilderness, and they volunteer 
and they're part of the community. So the fact that they would be involved, you know, in, you know, perhaps on the design committee, but also involved in the ongoing maintenance and stewardship. Yeah, how does kind maintenance of get handled? Or something like that, just in general, like recreational assets. Yeah, I mean, we can't fund no, we yeah. don't fund, fund maintenance, but it, it, it's park and recreation, so it goes back into the, goes the, back into their, their, budget, their basket. Yeah, but it also sounds like something is going to happen there coming out the other end. I, I don't know. Okay, no. <laughs> I mean, there's there are going to be a lot of public meetings, and one of the things that you know, I, I don't know how much how many emails the park and recreation people got, but we sure got a lot. So I assume, I mean, it's, it's their proposal, so. But a lot of support. And a, a lot of support. A lot of support. And yeah. one of the nice things is a lot of kids, um, really young teenagers wrote us, and that was really wonderful. Yeah, that was in your application. Yeah, yeah. it was, and it, um, you know, uh, I was very touched by that, because I'm an open space person. And I went in with a heavy heart and I came out as an advocate, so. One other question, just a liability, like someone's on a home track or something like that, it gets hurt, how does that work? Like, it's the town's liability. It is. Yeah. Okay. Like skating, yeah. I mean, like a lot of sports. Yeah, we, we, don't, we don't have the kind of liability you would have on your private property because it's a public asset. Right. So we are, we are yeah. Um, immunized in some sense. But, but we don't really know how much it would cost to maintain this. No, we don't. And we don't have a really viable design at all. So, um, you know, the next year is going to be spent coming up with a viable design. Paul Jones? Just, yeah, continuing with maintenance. I think all of the park and rec. Well, maybe not correct playgrounds, but an awful lot of the park and rec programs have a revenue component because we're supposed to break even. It's an enterprise fund. Is there any revenue component in the mountain bike facility? No. So um, there's discussion of classes, yeah. for example, bike rentals, um, especially people were concerned about children with limited incomes and could they afford these bikes. Right. Um, so Joe's talked about having bike rentals and perhaps classes. So maybe there'd be some revenue associated with the classes. Um, so, so potentially they could maintain I it. Yeah, I don't know beyond that, you know, and I don't think there's any plan to charge admission or anything, no. um, but who knows? Except we'd have to come up with yeah. money to buy the bikes to rent them out. Right. Yeah. Earn the revenue. Exactly. Yeah. Well, he's talked about, because they have skate rentals. You know, and it's and also partnering with bike shops, maybe. Mm -hmm. There's a bike yeah. shop right there. You know, there might be a better, better idea. Yeah. Are you any more questions? Yeah. Um, questions, Charlie? Thank you, um, Christine. Um, <clears throat> so I have two questions. Um, the invasive vegetation removal, where is that going to take place? It's a, fe <laughs> it's a feasibility um, study. For, um, to look yeah. at the invasive, the invasive right. vegetation townwide, town -wide. Okay. and to determine who's responsible for it and issues like that. We so did, it's, you know, we get an earlier. It's a study of sort of the pieces of land that nobody's taking care of that are full of invasive vegetation. So it's that's what they're going to be looking at and coming up with a plan for how to maintain it. And then uh, Millbrook Preservation buffer and that beautiful. Is this for the linear park that has been contemplated along the Brook uh, going west from say Mill Street? It's near the reservoir. Yeah. Oh. And her well there, there was a multi I'm just trying to understand the numbers. There, there, there has been in process, I mean I've lost track of where it is, but there was a multi million dollar right. project to um, Put a, a walking path along the Millbrook, mm -hmm. and, and um, I think some of it was funded by the Capital Planning Committee a couple of years ago. I don't know who, what the status is, but is this related to that? Well, I think what what happened was there was a lot of um, the Park and Recreation 
department had a lot of work that they were doing, but they were sort of le leaving out the natural features. So this project is trying to make up for that. And it's um, buffering the walking trail from the active recreation. So who's, who's doing it? Um, it's a conservation. conservation commission. I don't, I assume that they won't be doing it themselves with that figure. Any planning with the the concert, um, David Morgan? Yeah, David Morgan is the conservation but, agent. But this was more associated with the herd field project and the reservoir project. And that was where people started to realize that Millbrook wasn't getting the attention. And it's not going to affect the dam. That was one of our concerns. Yeah. We didn't want it to affect So this is, this is sort of way west. Yeah, way west. Way west. Yeah, it's not that walk. I don't know exactly where the walkway is, okay. but it's not that. No. It's really to protect to protect the banks and stabilize it. And thank you. Hey, just to give you uh, on Hills Hills, uh, going back to the early '80s, it was um, drip pipe path, and it was run through recreation in conjunction with the autos in junior high and it was the seventh and eighth graders and all, all the bikes that motorbikes they were donated by there was a business on summer street it used to be a um, wood burning stove place they don't donated everything and no one said a word anybody <laughs> <laughs> was happy with it <laughs> that's great no those were the days so, day. yeah. <laughs> so there's some history as far as um Bicycles, <laughs> in hills. <laughs> Dirt bikes. That's great. Wow. Other questions. Now these are human powered. You know? <laughs> yeah. Carolyn. So, um, where where is No Name Brook? <laughs> <laughs> I should have brought a map. Yeah. <laughs> that is also it's near the bike trail. Okay. And you know where the Downing Square project is? It's back behind there, this really litter strewn, nasty brook that you can you can cross at certain places mm -hmm. to get onto the bike trail. Okay. It's that. Okay. And it's hopefully the... we'll get a new name too. <laughs> There's gonna be a contest if you're Yeah, we're gonna make it a contest. But it's the same sort of um, the conservation commission is looking at the neglected spaces. Which I think is a wonderful thing to be doing. Yeah. And then the uh, under um, the um, invasive, so that's invasives on land, not water bodies. Yes. Yeah. Okay. On the land. And where is the orchard for the orchard signage? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know where Wellington Park, what Wellington Park is? It's back behind there. My husband and I found it by accident. <laughs> you know where the U haul. Places, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. 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 It's it really a, sweet. It's you know, a public orchard that yeah. harvests. In, in a way. Really? Yes. So you can go pick fruit there and tell you why. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Because I, I grew up by Robin's Farm by the basketball court, and that was Robin's orchard. And when oh, we really? were kids, we used to throw rotten apples at each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like any normal kid. Right. <laughs> Oh. I was just going to say, I, I, the good thing is that there are other locations where there could potentially be a public orchard, and I think this is a good test case. Yeah. If it's not attracting a lot of rats and, you know, yeah. reason, reasonably people to maintain, I think it could be right. a rubber stamp in other places, including Robinsville. Right. Yeah. Maybe kind of thing. Yeah, and, and um, the hope is that the Girl Scouts will sort of raise some money towards the 2500 as well, their park and recreation doesn't like just to give money without them doing fundraising. The Boy Scouts always fundraise, so the Girl Scouts are going to have to fundraise. Yeah. Other questions? Speed on the game. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, the Hills Hill. So there, you said there's going to be they're going to have to submit the design back to open to you folks for review. And it's going to be a landscape. Is that sort of written somewhere? Just so like the community oh, yeah. knows. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What we do at, after the town meeting vote okay. is we put we have sort of a contract with everybody, okay. and we put the conditions of the award in the contract. Okay, so it'll be sort of described there. For Absolutely. And um, I, I believe it's going to 
come back to us if the pump track is in the woods. Yes. Is that stated in any of your materials? Yeah, I was that gonna, you provide I'm sorry, could you guys speak up? Is yeah, if the, the contract is in what? What was that word? In the woods. Oh. Yeah. I was going to say it is stated in the minutes. We made yeah. sure that okay. it was part yeah. of the formal yeah. vote. Uh, um, I, I asked whether record. that was in any of the materials, that understanding agreement was in any of the materials to, that we've seen in writing. So the. Um, most of the trails are just trails, you know, like hiking trails. So they're less controversial, but the pump track, people were very concerned. So we said, um, if the pump track is going to be in the woods, we want to approve it, the design. And again, I think that the images on this very misleading feasibility study conjured up a lot of yeah. um, different thoughts by folks. Clear but, cutting. Yeah. Yeah, clear cutting and yeah. Can I ask a student, what is a pump track? <laughs> <laughs> I should have brought pictures. Yeah. 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 I can put one up. It's got little okay. hills. Pump and, track coming. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but not, it's not going to be, okay, as long as it's not the ones from that. Um, it just has bumps, and then people practice riding okay. it without pedaling. And, and, and none of them are in the woods. <laughs> yeah, no, they can't bear the woods. Yeah, see those, Russell Mill is one good example. It winds around trees, and one of the questions we asked in the meetings was, um, could you even, because there are areas that don't have a lot of trees, there's mm -hmm. brush. And we asked Joe if he could envision adding trees back. Like if they put the pump track, that would be dirt, not asphalt. Um, would they plant trees along it to really give that winding kind of okay. feel? And he said, yeah, I mean, we added trees in the reservoir, so we're not against adding trees. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. So sort of a general question about CPA funding. I know with the historical societies as a treasurer, we don't get the money until it's been spent. And, and approved right. and Feeney comes over and inspects it. Is that true for all of the projects? Yes, it is. Okay, because when I hear about it, we get the money back, or it's not, it's not we don't get the money back, it's- You don't take don't, it out. Don't you don't take it out. out. Yeah. If it doesn't meet the criteria. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a big carrot out there. Yeah. To, yeah. Pick, you know, it's not like, well, we tried, but we yeah. keep the money. No, no. That's not the way it yeah. works. And um, Jim Feeney and I have to sign every invoice. It's one of the hardest jobs. I've so, so everybody knows yeah. you don't get the money until you've done it according to the requirements of the CPA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? So, Annie. if I could go back to the ten sunny side, is that okay? Sure. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking at the, the budget for the pro forma, and I'm wondering whether or not somebody wants to uh, educate us all about what LIHT is. L I H T C. Um, I could take a stab at it. Is. Say that again. L I H C. Louder, please, in. Lick. Lick. The federal program, the state program for um, subsidizing health. I don't know which federal program that is. In order to build the housing that the housing corporation has built, there are multiple funding sources. Mm -hmm. And this must be a current one that the, either the federal government or the state government has. But usually, I mean, I think with Downing Square, there probably were six or eight, six to eight funders. Yeah. So it's that I don't know that specific program, and but it's obviously one that funds affordable housing. Well, I, was, I was asking a question I don't know the answer to. So oh, good. I'd be happy to tell you how this works. Would you? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a housing tax credit program. So mm -hmm. a corporation that wants to offset their taxes can subsidize affordable housing in order to reduce their tax burden. Uh, so it's a very clever way of subsidizing housing. But as you said, it's it relates to the leverage that our money, putting our money in, leverages both those tax credits yeah. and it makes it possible for them to get the straight up loans from banks and so on and so forth. So that's why on an affordable housing project like this, you see all these different sources. And that's why those dollars are so important. I yeah. think the last time we checked the HCA, Leverage for our dollars is like ten million. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yes, our our dollars are small. Yeah. And Downing Square was huge. The leverage, right? Yes. And yeah. what did we what did we like six hundred thousand? Yeah. Idea? Oh, so it's more a, than it's that. A, no, no, no. Oh, I don't. It's just, know. It's just really small dollars on our part chasing big dollars. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
And that's why it's good for the housing corporation to have two sources of funding from the yes. local. So she was delighted, Erica was delighted. Other questions? Anybody have any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much. And I greatly appreciate your getting the materials to us. Do you want a historic did. preservation or not? Uh, did we not cover that? No. Oh, okay, let's do that. I thought we had. <laughs> 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 Any questions? So the Winfield Robbins Memorial Garden, mm -hmm. um, that's a fair amount of money. So I'm assuming, are they building a new one? Are we no. re-landscaping it? What, well, we're not giving them any money this year. Okay. Because they haven't finished the money we gave them last year. Okay. So we decided when we were having this budget crunch that what we would do is ask them to um, wait a year and get the, the work done that was anticipated last year. What it is is um, the garden was designed by um, Olmsted's sons. Oh. And so it's a historic garden. And what they've done is they've got a plan with plants that were planted back then, but now are make sense. They're not putting plants that don't make sense in, in this world. So that's what they're doing. And one of the problems with the proposal is it's um, there's nobody doing the planting. <laughs> that was a worry of mine <laughs> because the, the volunteers are my age. <laughs> Um, but Mr. Feeney has taken over and has found somebody to do the second, you know, what he, what they were supposed to do last year. So this 89, is they're not getting this? Right, they're not getting it. Oh, okay. A little X next to Monotomy Rocks Park and an X next to Winfield Robbins Memorial Garden. Oh, Monotomy could use more. Well, <laughs> well <laughs> so Charlie. Uh, I didn't, there used to be a, a gardener in town that took care of that garden. Um, and and I think that position went away in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. So is Jim Feeney bringing that position back? I, I don't know. He's got a outside landscape contractor who's going to do the plan. It would be a great idea, Charlie. Oh, I, no, I just wonder where the money is coming from out of the operating budget. You'd have I, I, I'll find out for you. I would imagine it's coming out of natural resources. Yeah. But it sounds like it. I mean, it's an increment. It's, it's, it just jumps out of me as the town, you know, stopped spending that money decades ago, and now we're going to spend it again. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't, but I just wondered if we know about it. Yeah, and it's also we've renovated the um, pool there, so it's it's going to highlight the pool work. Can I just say something about the playground? Um, Clarissa asked everybody who submitted more than one grant to prioritize okay. and so the um park and rec prioritized hills hill over monogamy rocks park just the playground just temporarily for this year but they do have work they can do on it that doesn't need the funding yeah because they're, they're not abandoning <laughs> yeah. the playground it was just a prioritization um, and the other thing I wanted to say is about the Hauser roof. Um, we also didn't cut their funding just, you know, randomly. They no, had, they you. got other funding. Oh, mm -hmm. found it and, and they also prioritized and they asked to continue the window project. And they right. said, we have other funding. We're still going to do the roof, but we can, we'd appreciate any help. And the, um, the Arlington Friends of the Drama also reduced their ask which um, we appreciate it. Alex Jones, did you have a question? No, I was going to mention I was in the Robbins Garden um, not long ago, and Tommy Cacomaro's crew was in there cleaning out a bunch of stuff. My understanding, it was a volunteer. Oh, that's nice. And, nice. And, you know, brought his crew in to do a lot of weeding. And, Great. And something like that. So that's probably not a sustainable solution. But... No. And I think it's one of the sappers that's going to do the planning work for them. When it's planning season. Other questions? Carolyn? It's not, it's, um, 
I, I see that there are Conservation Commission um, ones in here. Is it the Conservation Commission and water bodies submitting things every year or every couple of years because they have so much work to do? I would, we would like, I would like to see them do that. Yes, okay, they do. Good. Uh, good. Almost every year they they yeah. put it, and they're not big ticket items right. usually. Yeah. So on the, the digitizing of uh, documents for Gallon, um, just a question: We hear about town hall needing to digitize all kinds of things. Is that feasible for them to come to you for help on that? I'd hope so. Okay. Planning did. Right. Planning did. Planning yes. did last year. But that was just yeah. the the big plans. We're hoping. I mean, the Cyrus Gallon Museum has done a really outstanding job. They have wonderful consultants. And we're kind of hoping that the town will look at that as a model because I think it's not that expensive and it's we really need it. And this actual grant this year is Robin's Library series down papers that they're transferring to down because of how well they did with their own. Gotcha. <coughs> Thanks. Um, the town hall envelope preservation is one. Are the other faces also envelope preservation or are they interior or something else? Well, no, they're mostly outside um, preservation. The roofs are in terrible shape. Um, you'll see, if you look at Town Hall, it's got a lovely tan um, tarp around the top and those finials are about to fall off. So they- No, I, I know it's in bad shape, but it's in bad shape inside too. So it's yes, it's, what, it's going into what the What sort of the phases meeting room. in your understanding is- Yeah. and. I, I actually think it would be a good thing. This is when we started CPA, we um, promised not to bond anything, but I think this actually is a project that should be bonded, not <clears throat> by CPA, but by you all, because um, there are many, many town halls that have used CPA money to start, like the preservation plan is, that's being done. That's a wonderful sort of blueprint for how things should be done. I think. Honestly, <clears throat> that the um, the project budget that is in that report that we sent you is too low, yeah. and I think that's why uh, you know construction prices right now are really high. But I think it would be something that we really should seriously consider bonding. Other questions? Okay. Other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think they're already out there. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. I'm always seeing you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. We should do other stuff. Okay. We should do other stuff because we we told them eight thirty. So there's right. still three kids who are working on home. All right. Let's see if we can knock off a few things. Um, um, town celebrations. The last one we have yet to do is the twenty five thousand dollar one for. I have that number right. Is that from um, Sandy's email today? Um, no, that was from last week. Yeah. 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 Thank you. 
Ну, I guess we'll hold off on the anniversary celebration because can't, Sandy's still working with the selectmen on that. Uh, what, Christine's you know, request as part of that we get a budget. That's what that's what he's working on. I'll tell him to move down the other end. Okay, for now. I mean, I've got a quick update on Minutemen. Yeah, I was just about to ask. Why don't you give us an update? So we will be getting a formal uh, communication about it. The school committee did consider our concern and discussed it. Um, I did get a call from Dr. Dawson, but they are not planning to change their position on how they're funding that service. Um, the, the first fields project. So um, they don't have anything, you know, as we've said, they don't have anything in writing that says that they were obligated to use rental funds to repay that debt. They don't think they're going to have an income because of the deal they're making about the phase two project. And they don't feel like they can move on it. Um, so I'm, I'm we are all in a holding pattern until we see whatever this formal letter describing their response is. Um, but folks should get ready to think about how they feel about it. And when is that letter coming? Well, Dr. Dawson called me on Thursday morning, but she was only going to be away for the weekend. She called me from the airport. <laughs> so I assume we will get it sometime this week. Um, I can follow up and remind her that we're expecting. Any discussion on that right now? Charlie, and then Dean. So, um, Andy, did you suggest that they could just reduce that other capital budget they had? I did. I said that in an email to Dr. Dawson, and I talked to Mike Ruderman about it. But I believe the decision was to not do that. I don't know any other comment right now. Dean? So if I recall, I feel like we've all read the regional agreement like a million times, but not once in the last year, probably. Mm -hmm. um, I believe the regional agreement requires unanimous voting for debt, right? For funding debt. And this has already been voted on. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's not unanimous. It's voting. If two people, if one person opposes it, it can still go forward, but if two people oppose it, it can't. Yeah, but the, 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 the acceptance of the debt has already been voted on. No, but, yeah, on, on phase one. Yes, and phase two may not be the capital assessment because of the deal they're making with a partner who's going to build the fields and then pay very, very low rent to use them part of the time for 20 years. So we may not have that level. I don't know for sure. Oh, well, we supposed to budget down every year for eternity out of anger. We could. Okay. <laughs> but again, they need six out of nine towns to vote yes. And, you know, five of those six towns, their assessments are very small. And they vote yes. Is this straight photo on budget stuff? That was a weird again? vote. Is it straight photo or weird photo on budget? It's weighted. Is it weighted? Yeah, it's weighted. It has been, it's been over a year. <laughs> Waited, then we can pick up with us. Yeah. Grant? Um, I understand the issue. Do we have any forecast of what amount we're actually talking about? About the field rentals, about what the yeah, dollar I mean, value might be over the next. So I believe what we accept with what we were able to determine is that the debt service on the note is about $115,000 this year, and what's going to show up in our assessment is about $34,000. So there's, or 35 or 40 or something along those lines. Yes, I actually, that, that wasn't my question. My question is the anticipated revenue we're getting from the fields. 
No, we don't have any idea what the anticipated revenue is. We know that what they have said is it is less than what we were told at the time. And part of that is about when the fields are going to be finished and that they are making a deal with another entity, I forget who it is, who is going to do the phase two construction. He's going to pay for it, the $14 million to put in the stands and the lighting and on six tennis courts. And that they mean then is that they will be a principal user of the fields at little or no rent, which reduces their rental income. Which and is that, what? I mean, what the whole bit where. The, the part I'm missing on this, I understand the part of the cost, but we made a deal to get revenue. And, and we made a deal for them to get revenue and to use that revenue to pay this debt. And how much of that revenue did we think that they might be getting? Charlie? Yeah. So the, the, the presentation that we put on here last year, we, we said they were going to borrow $1.9 million. Yes. And the, um, the um, Arlington share of that debt service which would be at about 30%, was going to be $77,000. Mm -hmm. And we agreed that we would pay that in the first year, mm -hmm. which is this fiscal year, fiscal 23. Yep. And the rest of the years after that, um, it would be covered by the rental. So they were going to get at least $210,000 a year rental. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know where the number that you said is. Only one hundred fifty thousand dollars. I don't know where that no, comes from. One hundred fifteen. Oh, I think I think that's what John looked up on. That was just the debt service on the um, one point seven nine million dollar bond. So maybe that's just the interest. Is that the first year? Uh, I was the current year. So well, that's the first year. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that's just the interest. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. So this, if I may. Go ahead. So the seventy-seven thousand we're going to be paying every year is going to be offset by X amount of revenue from well, the field. It's not just us. The, the, the revenue is going to be offset on the entire debt service for the, for the community. Yeah, no. I guess I'm missing what the X is on the total revenue from field rentals. But are we anticipating it's, it's going to be well, this huge? The debt, service, the debt service was going to be, I mean, we don't know what the total revenue was going to be, okay. but it was going to be at least enough to pay to the debt service, which okay. When he spoke to us, our guess was it was going to be two hundred thousand to two hundred twenty thousand a year. Okay. Total debt service. Right. Thank you, Charlie. That was the missing yeah. number. And, and I believe this anticipation was that the that's high. Was that's be high. high, high estimate. It was going to be more than that, and it was going to cover that plus the ongoing maintenance of the field complex. So I, I just didn't know what components. I know that there's this deal that we're we're. Right. There may be an implied agreement, there was an implied even though it's not explicit, but there may be yeah. an implied agreement. Yeah. But I'm trying to determine what the amount of the effect is. So, okay, you're saying something yeah. about 220 total, 77. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. So anything else we want to talk about before we get this letter and then finally take a vote on the minute and budget? Um, John? Yeah, thank you. Did I hear the other night that the um, because the state funding went up, they were going to get a new number on the minimum allocation? Yes, and I believe they are going to adjust our, I believe what Sandy was saying in the meeting the other night is they're going to adjust our the assessment overall based on that million dollars. So the operating assessment will come down. So, so is the number set or is the number kind of TBD? I think the somebody's got to do the math on the million dollars and see because it's weighted offsets. That's to the governor's budget. Right? Yes, so it's not set. Yeah, totally yeah. separate. Totally. Yeah, I just yeah. heard the other night when you know state funding yeah. numbers came out, minimum uh, assessment. Yeah, change. And if I, Charlie will correct me if I'm wrong, or Al will correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there's a floor and a ceiling, and the floor is the house, and the ceiling is the governor's, and it's always someone in between because they reconcile. Yeah. So if we, once we have the house numbers, we'll know. How high or how low it is, so they and at some point we'll have a revised assessment. Okay. And it won't be a revised by a huge amount of money. It's nine towns and three hundred. So yeah. I don't know, three hundred fifty thousand dollars or something. Maybe. Yeah. Jennifer, Jennifer, um, thanks. Um, I'm as frustrated as everybody, and I, I'm not sure what we can do about it. Um, completely separate issue. One of the things we were asking them about was whether they were interested in being or could push uh, bring their employees onto the GIC. 
Do we have a way to follow up on that? I did ask that question, and um, Dr. Dawson was going to um, ask Nikki Andre when she went to the meeting to discuss it with them, but I don't have it. Yeah, I just didn't want to like anyway. back to the drop. There's, as a there's, a, of a, there's a certain line here that other than just saying, hey, we know this thing that might help you, right. you can't go in and micromanage it. No, 100%. Right. We can, well, we have a rep that we could talk to who could bring things up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but they're in a consortium with other technical, with, you know, other vocational technical schools. Yeah. And so the, the, the whole consortium would have to decide they want to explore yeah. this. Yeah. And no, I don't know they might. Yeah. Charlie? Yeah, isn't that a, uh, also uh, a uh, labor issue? In other words, that has to be negotiating with the unions? If they have the same deal that we have, they don't have to negotiate with the unions if they can show that it will save them money. I see. And with, without reducing services to the, to the uh, membership. Now, I don't know whether or not vocational technical schools are covered in the same way that we were by that. And what happened for the town of Arlington was that we used that as leverage to get into negotiations. And we did negotiate a settlement with our unions that included meeting their concerns <coughs> with some investment of a small amount of money in HRA so that we can cover out of pocket costs for some period of time. It can happen at the table. So that can all happen. Charge. Um, but again, you can't. Yeah, I just. And also to keep in mind, um, Annie is exploring adding new members to the district. And Annie is going to represent us at a discussion on the end of the month and that requires the unanimity. All right. So we'll we'll move on for a minute hand. Can you please keep down here? There's some cheers there. Help yourself. Come on in. Come on in. Have you met Miss Mazzetti? I have. Great. Social studies? Either one. Teacher at Odyssey Middle School. Well, welcome everyone to the Arlington Finance Committee. And um, we're all set. We just um, yeah. yeah. Um, so we're students from Madison Middle School. I'm sorry, can you speak up? I apologize. We're, we're students. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're students from Audison Middle School. Um, we're doing a cat project this year, which is something um, that we do in eighth grade which is, it's called um, the Civics Action Project. And um, we chose restaurant composting. Um, my name's Anne Marie. My name's Summer Schattinger. My name's Allie Lip. Uh, I'm Jaden Key. My name's Ellie Rockwood. My name's Foster Woodbury. Welcome. Hey, all right, well, take it away. And to explain what you, your project is, what you're looking for, um, what your goals are, um, take it away. You can click on mine. I don't know if I can hide it. I'm suggest if you tell Tara when you want her to flip a slide so that she can be showing us what you're looking at. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Next slide. Okay, so next slide. 
Um, our proposal is a pilot composting program for Arlington restaurants along Mass Ave that subsidizes 10% of the composting fee through selective services. Next slide. Next slide. Um, okay, so the environmental benefits. Um, as you all know, climate change is an issue um, and it's an important issue to us. Um, we feel really strongly about reducing Arlington's um, contributions to climate change and our carbon footprint in general. Um, so composting is a really good way to act, is also a very good way to act on um, Arlington's net zero action plan um, for uh, net zero uh, emissions by 2500, or 2050, sorry. Um, and uh, work towards a more sustainable future. And if, you, and if you look specifically at food waste, you'll note that in the United States alone, 63 million tons of food waste is produced annually, with only 4% of this food waste co currently composted. Next slide, please. And if you look at Arlington specifically, Arlington solid waste is managed through waste incineration. However, when this fuel is burned, it produces nitrous oxide of greenhouse gas. This contributes to Arlington's on greenhouse gas emissions and to our carbon footprint. You'll also note that specifically when it comes to food waste, food waste is composed of 70% water, and this reduces incineration efficiency, increasing operation costs, energy and fuel, while also increasing our greenhouse gas emissions. Next slide, please. If you compare this to composting, composting breaks down into non-toxic components. This is water, carbon dioxide, and biomass. And furthermore, this biomass can be distributed for use in farms and gardens, so it's really the full life cycle and use of the food waste. Furthermore, if you just note with the greenhouse gas emissions, nitrous oxide has 300 times the global warming potential than carbon dioxide does, which means that it retains 300 times the amount of heat in our atmosphere, which is of course highly, which is correlated to global warming. Okay. Um, this then leads us to why we chose restaurant composting to address this issue. So from the quote we got from Black Earth Compost, Restaurants can produce over 600 pounds of food, of food waste per week, and 90% of restaurant waste is compostable. So I wanted to talk about the efficiency of restaurant composting. So restaurants have a large environmental impact because, as we've already said, 90% of their waste is compostable. And if we compare this to single establishments or households, the volume of compost is much greater. And currently we're not doing a lot to compost for restaurants. So when we pull compost out of the trash, it actually decreases the cost of the trash because we have the same volume of waste, but the trash is also, when you pay for the trash, you're paying in pounds and that's the same with the compost. So when you're taking the compost out of the trash, it actually reduces the cost of the trash. So when all of the compost stops are concentrated along Mass Ave, all the, when our pilot uh, companies take compost from them, it will decrease the fuel costs and also it will decrease the carbon emissions from the fuel, which is good for the environment, but also it lowers the price per stop. So we were on the phone with Black Earth Compost and they said they could actually reduce the cost of their normal pickup if all of their stops are concentrated along one road. So additionally to the efficiency, it spreads awareness because all of the restaurant employees and all of the customers are like, oh, this restaurant composts. Maybe I want to keep going back because there are a large density of eco-friendly citizens in Arlington. So most people would be like, hey, I think I want to go and eat at this restaurant that composts. Next slide, please. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. So, I wanted to get into the restaurant benefits, but first of all, I wanted to talk about legislation. So recently there was a mandate that said that restaurants that produced over one ton of organic waste needed to compost, but that has been changed to one half ton of organic waste. And it has been predicted to go back to a quarter ton very soon. So this, what does this mean? So this means that we're already on the path towards composting and this subsidy will only make it easier, an easier choice for restaurants um, in the following years. But when restaurants are mandated and have to compost, 
a lot of restaurants have been struggling lately because of COVID and we want to support our small businesses and mandating compost will cost more for them. So we did, we wanted to subsidize that cost so that they don't have to pay more than they usually do so that they can stay afloat. Um, oh. <laughs> All right, so one of the perks of composting that we haven't mentioned yet is the increased business. So restaurants like Za Arlington have made their composting actually part of their business plan to attract customers. So like when you're on the fence and be like, hey, I wanna, there's restaurant A and there's restaurant B, which one do I wanna go to? Well, restaurant A composts, so I might wanna go there because 60% of households prefer dining at zero waste restaurants. And not only is there a large density of people who are eco-friendly in Arlington, but in the neighboring towns in Massachusetts, if we have all of these restaurants along Mass Ave that are eco-friendly and they compost, there are people like, hey, maybe we should go to these restaurants and try them because we are lowering our carbon footprint that way. So finally, um, the financial incentive for the restaurants. Um, as you can see on the graph, I think we should take a minute to look at this graph. Um, the blue line represents um, the quote that we got from Black Earth. Um, and the red line represents um, the trash cost for most restaurants um, and what they're paying for their, um, for their trash being picked up. The yellow line is um, the result of a 10% subsidy um, provided by the, um, the Arlington government. Um, so uh, we chose 10% because it brings um, the composting price to the same price as trash, as trash collection for um, our set uh, weight, which is 600 pounds. We got this number um, from an approximation of um, how much uh, waste a restaurant produces, like food waste. Um, the remaining trash would, because restaurants are still producing actual trash, um, could be dealt with in a different way. For example, Arlington's commercial orange bag program. Um, you might all be familiar with this um, and we're not experts on it, but, um, but this could significantly help restaurants um, with how they're paying for trash um, and it could significantly decrease their costs. Um, and just as a reminder, this is a good idea because um, we want financially stable restaurants in Arlington. We want them to be able to stay afloat and we want them to be thriving here. Um, and also the orange bag program is run by the town of Arlington. And, um, and we don't, again, we're not experts on it, but, um, but like this is, this is government run. This is already um, being provided by Arlington. Next time. Now we would like to look at the cost of all this. Next slide, please. Okay. So we reached out to Black Earth Compost and they told us that a for 200 pounds, it would be a $20 pickup. So that's a 48 to 64 gallon bin, depending on the restaurant. And that price does include the bin, the compost liner, the fuel, and the tipping fee and processing costs. So you don't need to buy the bin separately. And the restaurants produce on average three bins of food waste per week. Next slide, please. That gives us to 600 pounds of compost per week, equaling $60. If the town did the 10% subsidy, the town pays $6 per week per restaurant, and per month, it'd be $24, and per year, it'd be $312. Next, please. So now if we look at the cost per participating restaurant, um, first, you'll note that there are 57 restaurants along Massachusetts Avenue that would be eligible as defined in our proposal. So this means that along Massachusetts Avenue, there are 2 million pounds of food scraps that could be diverted over a one year period. However, we recognize that this is a first year pilot program and that not all restaurants will be interested in this proposal. So if you, next slide please. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so what we propose is a one year pilot with 16 participating restaurants. So 16 participating restaurants would make up approximately 25% of the total restaurants along Massachusetts Avenue. And this program to divert over a one year period, half a million pounds of food scraps at a cost of just $5,000 to the town of Next slide, please. 
This pilot program would require $4,992 for one year. So after speaking with um, a number of people uh, in the town of Arlington, um, they have uh, voiced some concerns and um, we'd like to just address that. Next slide, please. Um, oh, okay. Um, so things that um, people have talked about is the issue of rodents. Um, so it's a common misconception that compost bin will attract things like rodents, um, but this isn't entirely true um, because it's not like there's additional food waste being like set aside that would um, attract them more than the food waste would already attract them in the dumpsters and the trash bins. Um, so you'd just be moving your already present food scraps and putting them in a separate bin. Um, and keep in mind these bins that we would use, um, unlike other bins, uh, they have, um, they were designed to keep out rodents with um, durable plastic, uh, a heavy duty latch, and they're washable, you to clean, and they trap odor inside. Um, so this would actually reduce the amount of rodents present rather than increasing. Uh, yeah. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, um, so this would cost the town, or your, you would be asking for four thousand nine hundred ninety-two dollars. Who's actually going to be running the program? Um, that's something that we haven't fully addressed, but we plan, um, we haven't had a chance to, but we plan to, uh, talk with Charlotte Malone, um, and, uh, discuss possibly, um, giving this to someone who, uh, who is already in the, um, like hired by the town. Um, and yeah, and, but we need a little more time to address that. And do you have in mind a particular service composting company? Yeah. And who would that be? Um, we've been looking at Black Earth. We got a quote from them. Um, and that's what we used in our data. Uh, as you all probably know, they already service a lot of um, rest or not restaurants, but um, but business, yeah, households, businesses, some businesses in Arlington. Um, so they're pretty familiar with our town. All right, questions, Grant. Yes, um, first, um, very good presentation. Um, it's one of the best presentations that you've seen from everyone else. <laughs> also, do you know anything about water and sewer? But seriously, I do have one question um, and a very good um, framing and everything, but um, and great idea with the pilot. Um, how are you going to select or how are you going to uh, gather or identify these 16 um, restaurants for the pilot? So it's more of a, like a first come first serve. We've um, already reached out to a lot of restaurants. We've called them and um, some of them have voiced their interest in participating in this, so. So you just follow up yeah. with them. Okay. I'd also like to add that um, as part of our CAP project, um, we have, besides just the six of us, um, the other students in our um, second period uh, civics class, are also working um, with this. We're currently um, in, I think, stage four of our CAP project and um, stage five. Um, and so as part of this, uh, we're looking at um, advertisement. Um, I think we're, we've talked, uh, a group of students is working on um, posters um, for Arlington, raising awareness about this program. Um, and we've also, we've, I mean, we've also got a team of um, of other students ready to um, help with uh, with calling, with um, contacting, and other ways um, directly these rest these restaurants. One last, um, thank you. Uh, very good all around. Have you um, you've reached out to these restaurants, which is great and everything. Have you actually I, um, have sixteen actually uh, have responded in the affirmative, or there more you know, less or not sixteen. Okay. Very good. That's that's great great start. Start. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. I mean, I have hard questions. So you guys did a great job at identifying why 10% and you know why that would be an incentive for restaurants because the average restaurant produces 600 pounds at 10%, you know, that's the same amount. Do we have a sense that the Arlington restaurants are producing 600 pounds? And that sounds like the industry average. Do we know that that's true or not? Uh, yeah, so we reached out to Black Earth. Yep. which does already service 
um, only a few restaurants in Arlington. Mm -hmm. And basically um, what they told us is that depending on the size of the restaurant, it can range from 400 pounds to 800 pounds. Okay, so, most restaurants. Pounds. so we took the median. Great, okay, good. Um, <clears throat> second question related to that is, so we already have restaurants who are composting. Would they be allowed to be in the pilot and thus get a discount or something they're already doing? Um, with our current understanding, there's only um, one restaurant that we know of. Okay. So this wouldn't be a significant issue. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Great. Other questions? Peggy. Yes, thank you. Um, this is a wonderful presentation. Have you um, talked with other towns? Have, has, have other towns done something similar? Um, any idea? So we haven't talked with towns directly. Um, we've done a little bit of research uh, and we know, we haven't talked with them about restaurants, but um, we know that Medford does a um, subsidizes for um, private company composting pickup for residents, um, but not specifically with restaurants. Al Jones. I want to congratulate you. The presentation was, it was, it was really excellent. And I have to tell you, my brother's been working in municipal composting for the last 50 years, and it, you, you've hit on the, the, the tough spots. Um, and I particularly like the, the attention to rodent control because, in fact, it would keep rodents more under control. Uh, the dumpsters are pretty leaky, those trash bins are pretty good. Um, do the school cafeterias compost? Yes. Okay, so I'm trying to because that would have been the target. And, and do you have? Um, any, any experience with school cafeterias and any opportunities or problems that you want to confront? Yeah, so right now, Arlington schools do compost. Um, some of the issues that we have come across is, um, personally, I do volunteer with the compost bins and help sort the trash. Um, some of the issues is that some students aren't aware of, I guess, the proper sorting, and this could present an issue to restaurants, um, which is why we reached out to Black Earth, and they do have some free materials that they can give restaurants to help train restaurant owners um, on how to really train their staff. Good, thank you. Other questions? Dave. Just out of curiosity, what happens to this program when you guys move on? What if we talk about what's changing in Arlington? I'm Years. Yeah, so um, we've we've uh, heard a bit about um, some legislation, as you saw in our slideshow, um, and we were fairly vague about it because we don't have all the information. But um, but from what we've heard, uh, legislation to move down to a quarter um, ton of to, uh, was it gar like of, um, waste all waste or uh, it's, no it's not just it's not just yeah it's organic waste yeah. okay so just or, um a quarter ton of organic waste um any restaurant who produces that much needs to um, be able to compost um so we we're looking ahead a little bit and this program would be important for a little while um and hopefully to get um companies uh comfortable with composting and uh, like, so that it wouldn't like really rock their, um, their whole business. Um, but like, we're looking forward and seeing that, um, that this is a possibility for the next few years even. Um, and so this program might not be as important when, um, when restaurants really need to start composting and, and are supposed to be composting um, on their own. So we, we don't have to support them as much anymore. Um, additionally, I'll just add that it's our understanding that in a few years, the town of Arlington is going to have to renegotiate its um, trash contract. And this means that the cost of our trash collection is going to um, really increase by quite a lot, which means that the financial incentive to compost is just going to be that more important. Brian? Um, are restaurants paying for their own trash or is the town doing it? Um, yeah, they have private contracts. Yeah, they have, um, they have private contracts. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Um, I have to say that this presentation, one, is fantastic. Two, I happen to be married to the queen of recycling and composting. <laughs> so she would really love to know about your group. But I'm going to come, I'm going to come home tonight and I'm going to tell her about it. Um, you guys are fantastic. You already got my vote. Okay. <laughs> Annie, she's so, so since we're rolling over into the complimentary part of this case, I, I just want to tell you guys 
um, particularly in front of your parents here, that this is the toughest committee in town. It's yes. very, very hard to impress us, particularly because we're not used to people coming in with data and understanding of numbers and an actual cogent argument about why they want to do something. So I really appreciate your being concise, being clear, and knowing your stuff. Charlie. How long do you think the town has to subsidize these restaurants? Um, yeah, that is something that we um, should look further into. However, um, it is our understanding, once again, with the legislation, that perhaps anywhere from like five to 10 years on um, the threshold to compost could be lowered. So I'd say, if not sooner, yeah. If not sooner. So it really would be, yeah, somewhere in that range. Are you going to have somebody bidding in competition against Black Earth? Yeah, so we have um, received two competitive quotes, um, one from City Compost for um, $18. That came in this afternoon, which is why we weren't able to include it in our presentation. We're also slightly unclear about the terms of that, um, of that proposal. Um, so I think we'll need to follow up with them. So if they if you get competition and the price goes down, are you still going to ask for the subsidy? In other words, if you were at a certain price and we we're subsidizing it, but a competitor comes in and offers a lower price, we wouldn't have to subsidize anymore. Well, it depends on the price. Um, it, I mean, if the price is significantly lower, then um, the subsidy might not be necessary. But um, I mean, from our estimates, it's probably not going to get a ton better. Um, well, um, twenty twenty dollars to eighteen dollars is five percent, so you don't have to go far to get another five percent. But uh, yeah, we we talked with um, Black Earth, and they were talking about tipping fees and um, fuel costs included, and the um, city compost was not uh, quite as detailed. Yeah. Thank you. Um, another thing I might just add is that um, Black Earth Compost is a unique composting company in the fact that it has its own facility um, that processes the compost and um, you know, sells it back to farmers and gardeners. Um, the other composting companies, such as Bootstrap Compost and City Compost, um, don't have their own processing facility. It actually goes to one run by the state of Massachusetts. And I believe, I would want to do more research on this, but I believe that the way that they handle their compost doesn't have um, the same positive environmental impact. Thank you. Other questions? So far. And how did you arrive at about 10% as the subject? Um, so we were, uh, could we go back to the graph? Um, yep. <coughs> so yeah, this is, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um, this is a pretty important, um, important graph. Um, if you want to take a better look at it, uh, just on your own time, um, if that would interest you. But um, so we looked at 10%. So um, 600 pounds, uh, we've gotten, our sources are kind of um, a little all over the place, but um, we've looked at uh, how much waste a restaurant generally produces. And um, we were looking at somewhere between 600 and 800 pounds. Um, so 600, we estimate that they, there would be about 600 pounds of compost um, if there was a little bit more waste in total. Um, so subsidizing to 10% would meet it right. Um, I mean, you can see that 216 and 215.83 is pretty similar. Um, so uh, it would subsidize the amount that um, it would cost for the trash to pick up. So therefore you're not, uh, they're not, the restaurant isn't paying more. Okay, so you're just the figuring it will induce the restaurant. It exactly. won't change their costs at all. Right. And it will induce them to do a good thing. Right. Okay. Um, the other thing, um, I actually would love someone who's knowledgeable on this, if there is anyone, um, to speak about the um, orange bag program. Um, but we've we did a little bit of research, and um, from what we can tell, subsidizing the, um, this amount might um, might reduce restaurant um, restaurant like price or uh, costs significantly, um, so that there would be. An even larger incentive. Um, do we want to? No. Uh, Alex Jones. 
I think um, from an educational point of view, I expect you've learned an awful lot about compost and economics and you know, charts and graphs and things like that. Um, do you anticipate, you know, if, if town meeting approves this appropriation, um, there'd be a lot of logistics and details about, you know, who tracks the compost and writes the checks and picks the restaurants, things like that. Would you intend to follow on with the development of this into a real program to learn more about well, like if you're running a business, you get a, you get an investment, but then you have to make the business run. Right. Now, is that something you'd look forward to? Uh, yeah, I think we're going to work on that. Yeah. Um, and this sort of um, cap program, it continues all the way, I believe, into 10th grade. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this group could continue working on this yeah. um, all the way through high school. We also have one here. That's what you're going for. Richard, the finance committee. I'm in the finance committee. Water and sewer, something. Other questions, Carolyn? Have you already had any conversations with um, DPW or anyone else in town? Uh, oh, okay, um, we've we've tried to reach out um, to a few people. Um, I mean, our timeline was a little bit right, short. Um, yeah, so uh, we tried to reach out to them multiple you talked times. To you yeah. talked we to talked, to, so um, we had a day where um, a lot of experts um, were brought in. Um, and so we talked with Charlotte for a little while. We gave her the gist of our idea and our project and informed her that we were coming to you guys. Um, and we haven't talked to her since. Um, we've tried to get in touch with a few more specific questions, but haven't had the chance. Um, but that's something that we see in the next probably week. But she is she is aware of the program. Yes, no she's aware. Yes. Yeah. She didn't tell you you were crazy. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. Yeah. Jennifer? Thanks. Um, yeah, so this is a, a fabulous presentation. You've done so much work. Um, I know you know that you have just a little more work to do before you get to town meeting. And so um, besides Charlotte, uh, the economic development coordinator is a great person to talk to. And I can actually see like a sticker program where restaurants can advertise that they're part of this program. I mean, especially if we're not turning restaurants away, that might be unfair to you know, turn them away and then not let them put a sticker up. But um, but that could be something that, that to get it the benefit that you pointed out that people do like to see their restaurants be environmentally conscious. So yeah, that's great. And also talk to more restaurants. Yeah, that would right. really yeah. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, this really has been a fabulous, uh, impressive presentation. We, uh, we are very, very pleased. It, and, um, um, so what we typically do is at some point, it may be tonight, but it very well may not be tonight, we'll talk about your proposal and then we'll take a vote whether we'll support it or not. And we'll get back to you no matter what. Uh, you have some people liaisons who will get back to you and also also probably give you some more ideas if uh, you come up with any. But again, thank you for coming. This has been very, very educational for us and we enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone who is not signed in, sign in on the way out, please. Including any of the parents. Thank you. Would you like us to sign in, please? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah, we can bring this sign out to the outside. Staying because I'm a little too close to one of the grants. All right. So all of the treasurer of the store goes there. All opposed, <laughs> all, all in favor, raise your hand. Fourteen in favor. Anyone opposed? And one abstention. Uh, DPW yes. facilities. Can you start presenting? We're ready to do DPW. Yeah, we're ready to do DPW. Okay. All right, let's punch into DPW. I want to get some of these budgets at least started tonight. Do you want to share or do you want me to share? Can you just pull the budget up? I yeah. think it's, uh, oh yeah, technically 83. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, are we looking for facilities or? Uh, of course, 80, well, it's 83 ish. Okay. I guess we're going to start from there. So, probably in order. So, we're going to do facilities later. We'll start with DPW and then we'll get as far as we can with DPW and then we'll get facilities and get started. Oh, let me share. Sorry, I just realized. Okay. Yeah, we're going to start with DPW. So you want to do a little intro, a discussion yeah. of general issues, and then we'll go into yeah. the individual divisions. Yeah, we'll jump in. So uh, thank you. Uh, so a lot of fresh faces for DPW this year. Uh, and thank you to Christine for handing it off and sort of doing the, the whole pass off and downloading all her knowledge to us. Uh, so uh, yeah, Jennifer Bird, this is a great community members of the committee have been really great to work with them. So, uh, so Mike Brandemacher, we met Mike Brandemacher, he's the DPW chief for all, maybe most of you know, but some of you are new. Uh, he has a new deputy there, Nielsen We we met with him, Mike, uh, ran through all the budgets there, and it's a lot. Uh, so we talked talk, talk about a couple big picture things, uh, as we heard from Daryl, right, we have a new building. Uh, so that's, you know, we were told, Mike was told the new building will be ready by the end of March, but that could be April-ish. So, um, He's not expecting any further budget asks from capital, uh, being strategic as they try to fill up the interior space. Uh, so it'll be DPW, inspectional services, ladders on the first floor. The new building is open. They're going to move the people in, vacate some of the old buildings, and turn to some of the first, next phase of the project. Um, 
I think just a general observation, and this is probably not new, but across a lot of the different DPW budgets, you know, there's, there's vacancies. Uh, Mike said, they're just as challenged as every other employer right now to attract people. So they're trying to be creative, uh, you know, some vacant positions you might see have a step increase. That's just to sort of attract people. Uh, one thing they're starting to think about is, you know, they need CDL commercial driver's license uh, licenses for a lot of the work that they do, but they have a hard time finding candidates. So one project they're thinking about is, you know, they can train people in house. So they're not having to find somebody, you know, with a CDL and make it easier to find candidates. Um, and then, yeah, he's just, you know, he's worried about also retention. He's also just lost two people to other communities due to, to the pay issue. So uh, I think that, uh, yeah, we're hopeful the new building will, you know, combine with salaries, combine with the new building, combine with a good fleet of vehicles that make us an attractive community, but uh, we'll work to that. So it will start. Just go in order here. 85 is sorry, natural. just one more sorry. big picture of uh, the contract negotiations. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Uh, so this is what we're collective bargaining has oh. right has finished for the workers a few months ago. Those numbers are already in the budget, but the SEIU has just completed, and those numbers will be populated with the magic balance gems <laughs> into the budget when we go down in town meeting. So, and they'll be set for a couple of years. So, the next few years, we won't see. You know, gaps. You don't see that money sort of in the town manager's budget um, as part of the so we'll, we'll have predictability. We've heard a lot about trash and recycling. So we'll, we'll get to that eventually, but yeah. it's uh, we spent a lot of time <laughs> talking to Mike about that. There are a lot, and Julie as well. So, uh, so thank you. Uh, so we'll jump, I think, just to natural resources. Um, just as a friendly reminder. Management care, maintenance of athletic fields, playgrounds, parks, traffic islands, public trees. Uh, you know, there's a couple of vacancies. Like I said, Mike is working to fill those positions. Um, you know, vacancies impact the ability to maintain fields and open space. Um, just sort of digging in on page 86 here. Um, overtime budget's about a little higher than the actuals. We were told overtime request is just based on the five-year average of actual expenditures. Uh, maintenance is for outside contractors, things like mowing. Uh, you know, let's see what, what's other one here. Materials, uh, things like mulch, ball field markings. Uh, there's some weird sort of a couple spending items in here for actuals, but don't have you know recommendations. Um, we were told that this is for DPW to track um, energy use at the Ryder facility when we contract the building out to the landscaping company. Um, uh, we have tree planting in here. Uh, we've heard a little bit about foliage before or the lack thereof in town. So the natural resources, they plant about you know, 300 trees per year. Uh, they do it in house at a pretty affordable rate, about $100 per tree. Uh, you know, tree planting, <laughs> and other things too, like stakes, bags, you know, soil. Um, there is interest, though, from the tree committee to do a lot more planting in town. They have their own revenue source uh, uh, from the Trees Please Fund, which I Burned was a thing. Uh, so I think it's donations. I think, like, I think they also, you know, there's other sources of money there. I think it's also the builders. Builders. Builders that pay, like, if they cut down a tree and there's a penalty, yeah. they pay money in there. But Mike, so I think he's talking to the tree, the tree committee, because mm -hmm. uh, the number that for outside contracts to do it is way more $1,500 a tree. So that's a lot, uh, which is so Mike is sort of trying to think about, is there a way to plant more trees than 300 per year, but maybe do it in an affordable way. So um, yeah, so that's sort of one of the things that we had talked about. Um, and yeah, we don't really, we don't really have the capacity to do more than 300 per year on our own, uh, but the three things just want to do more. So, uh, the balance of the trees, please fund is around 300,000. Um, tree pest management, uh, that is 
for a private contractor to combat the emerald ash borer. Um, talked about holiday lighting before. I think other purchase services, slide 236, that is to hire a vendor for holiday lighting in the center of town, historic sculpture maintenance, used to maintain the Stan Wilson statue and flagpole of town hall, others. Um, that's not anything else, Jennifer? Yeah, I just want to answer. Uh, you, you mentioned that, but just sort of yeah. add two more things. Yeah. Um, one is just clarification about the holiday lighting. Yeah. The holiday lighting budget for 15000 is basically the cost of the contractor to put out the lights and take them down. But we don't own those lights. The money in the parking benefits district is used for, and that's for basically, I think, just the park, the main park in the center, what's mm -hmm. outside of whatever that building is. Yeah. Well, I, I can't remember the building. Okay. Um, the park benefits district is buying lighted up wreaths that they used to go around the lampposts. So those are different. So those, and those are new. We didn't used to do them, and the park benefits district is buying those, keeping them, storing them, and putting them up. Um, so you're recommending that the natural resources budget be approved? We recommend approval for the taxation total of one, seven, nine, four, five, three, one. Quick question. Okay. Yeah. So, quite so any questions on natural resources? Annie. Uh, so um, the there's a reduction in the longevity. Is that the turnover? Did you talk about it at all? Not, so we have some vacant positions. So did that reduce our longevity costs? Yeah, uh, we did not. In general, we talked about it, but we didn't. We didn't talk about this question. I mean, it's a reduction. But I'm not going to complain about it. I just yeah. wondered if you. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. So it's been moved in. Second, second all in favor of natural resources aye. say aye. Aye. aye aye any opposed all right it's been approved on to the next one uh so uh ad page 88 maintenance of town fields uh, was also for a small amount uh, generated some back and forth so this supports landscaping of town fields by a private vendor. So it's buried in the grass, uh, providing nutrients. Uh, this is different than mowing, which the town does. So this is a place where DPW splits the cost with park and recreation. The, <laughs> I've been trying to find an actual piece of paper that describes the agreement, but what's been explained to me is that it supports land, uh, excuse me, the original arrangement is 50 50. EPW and Park Recreation is supposed to split the cost, with it being $50,000 and EPW and basically Park Recreation. As you can see, that is not the actual for FY21 or FY22. So we talked about that a little bit. Mike basically said costs are going up and EPW is being asked to cover the, the total cost. And, and it sounds like Park and recreation just does not, you know, I don't, I don't know if they've addressed their fees or are going to increase their fees at all, but they're basically not making their hands of the deal. So it was a little frustrating. Uh, uh, we don't, you know, the contract of this work is out for bid. Uh, so again, this is a private vendor that does this work. So we don't know what that number is going to be, and, but, you know, I think we were told. 50,000 is what we we're asking for, and that's what we want. So, you know, it might be helpful. <laughs> I mean, we'll, 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 we'll endorse the 60, but I think, you know, it would kind of be helpful, if we, at least I would think, I mean, we could discuss this, like whether park and recreation or the town manager needs to like figure out, you know, is park and recreation paying their share? You know, so. What, what I understood is they are paying as much as they have. But the question is whether they could increase their fees. Yeah. Is it that sort of question? There has been some deficits because of COVID issues. So it might not have felt like the right time to ask them, but that doesn't mean they next year is not. So, so I want to speak to that for a minute. There is a 
uh, chunk of money in a budget line for reservoir expenses that is intended to maintain the landscaping at the reservoir that recreation is absorbing. And that's about $25,000 as I recall. I did not specifically talk about whether or not they're contributing to the maintenance of the fields. Um, this, so this is, uh, this is another frustration that I have. So maintenance across different things means different things in different budgets. So, mm -hmm. so it, it's weird, right? So it's not, maintenance means different things, yeah, right? I know. Right, this is not mowing, right? This no, is I like, yeah, yeah, this is area in the ground. So yeah. things that are more complicated than just- Maintaining them as plain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah, I don't know, mm -hmm. I don't- I'm You're not, saying they have more money somewhere. Uh, well, so no, what I'm saying is, I mean, there, there's a couple of different ways to argue it. I think it's a, to be raised with the town manager and argue with the town manager. But what most of our playing fields are used are for sports. And those are usually either private organizations or the school's team. So aerating the fields, lining the fields, all that field maintenance isn't for programs that the recreation department is making money on. Oh, right. Okay, they're not charging the, the Arlington Soccer Club's money isn't flowing through the recreation department. I, well, actually, we pay ten dollars per player. So we okay. pay thirty six. We the Arlington Soccer Club alone pays thirty six thousand okay. dollars a year. But so I guess the big question then is. How, what do you think Dean should be, is the reasonable amount for the rec department to be paying for the off when we, get to, when we get to comments, I'm going to talk like a crazy person on this topic. So I don't even know if I should, you know, show my crazy person hand right now. Oh, okay. Right. Can we get to comments? Yeah, let's, well, let's hear it, let's hear it, Dean. So, this is a joke at this point. Okay, so I have all my computer, you guys can't see it. So the rec department did the Town of Arlington Outdoor Athletic Field Use Assessment, okay? Where they concluded with the obvious part that um, Shane has gotten to, which is that um, that they need to increase the user assessments to the, to the groups, right? So it, it, it been, it's been, um, it's funny, I was at a hearing for this and somebody said, um, they said, you know, it's been ten dollars. It's been ten dollars per player since Charlie Foskett told us we should pay for our own maintenance of the field. <laughs> and, like, and that was a long time ago. I asked you about it. So I was like, that's like 2004. Like that's a long, long time ago, right? And so they do this study, and they were like, yeah, we've got to increase it to fifteen dollars. They send me all the user groups, and they're like, it's going up to fifteen dollars. I'm like, that's great. And then they never increased. It just never went up. Like, and so like you got this like absurd scenario where like the rec points at DPW and DPW points at the rec and everybody obfuscates in budget meetings. And then you walk by our fields and they are atrocious. Like they are, they are terrible, right? Like they're, they're just these like, like if you were with a down in Florida field, just a big dirt bowl, right? Like it's, it's gross, right? Um, I don't think, um, I don't think Thorndown is much better either. Right. Project's always been a little. Um, and then, and then, well, you see, and then, so what's what's the solution, right? So we wait till hurricane gets really, really bad, and then we renovate it, and then we reopen in the spring, and then we just let it get torn to, to all holy hell again, which just makes absolutely no sense, right? And 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 underlying this, I don't want to get into too much of this discussion, is um, really for way more into policy, underlying a lot of it. Concern is they do a study when they do this user study about how much the groups are paying and how much field space they get. Mm -hmm. There isn't actually a correlation between the two. Mm -hmm. So some sports who pay very little have a, most of the field space, right? So, like in general, if I could conceptualize it, like um, diamond sports tend to get a lot of field space, they tend to have very low participation, they tend to have very low input right the mm. rectangular running sports tend to get crammed in they tend to pay a lot more and, and frankly the only difference between is girls participation in rectangular sports like the boys participation levels are both the same as girls play um sports on the same level right um and so they just need to 
they just need to all grow up and deal with the crap. Like before these fields are just giant dirt balls. Like, I mean, you guys did a great job, right? I'm gonna vote against this budget, right? Because it's fifty thousand dollars, but it's annoying. It's annoying that we have these dirt fields. And it's annoying that the rec department can't increase the fee from 10 to $15. Mm -hmm. Just stuff like that. Like enough is enough, right? And maybe we, maybe we shouldn't put it down because that'd be ridiculous. But we should say something. We should have a comment back to DPW that enough is enough. Fix the mess. Okay. So. so it's interesting. I'm looking at the budget. Um, I'm looking at the budget. For a field permit fee this is spring, summer, and fall. And the total of the expected revenue and fees is $21,500. So that represents what they do is they take they take the money and they actually use part of it for the porta potties, which you're not seeing. Which oh, right. They siphon it out to three different buckets. They do porta potties, something, and something. Yeah, but the revenue-wise, it should just show the revenue. I, I can tell. I can tell you the circle base. Oh, I'm. I tell you the circle is thirty-six thousand. Right. It sounds like we have to send a subcommittee after somebody. Any other questions or comments on this, Charlie? Yes, uh, I think um, we should. Well, just sort of following what Andy said, uh, we should send, we should get back to the manager. I mean, this is a management problem. They shouldn't be coming to us with a, with a budget that's not solving it. You might as well not spend any money on it if you're not solving the problem. Mm -hmm. So uh, <clears throat> I, I think that somebody from the finance committee should talk to the manager and not me, because I'm not in that, this, this area, mm -hmm. and get, get them to come up with a, with a program. It, it oh. might, might be the best for maybe me and somebody on the GW budget for them to go and talk to. Like, get a hold of Sandy. My suggestion that they're asking for $60,000, even though ultimately they may, may be paying more than $60,000. But the budget request is for $60,000, which seems mm -hmm. reasonable to use that word. But so I would suggest that we vote this budget and if it, whether it passes or not, if Shane and Annie, you can be our subcommittee, our working group to deal with both yep. the town manager, the DPW and parks and rec to yep. get a, a more rational plan in place. Any other discussion about uh, the field maintenance item? Is there a motion? I will accept it for sixty thousand dollars. Second. That's been made and seconded. All right. Um, all in favor, raise your hand. Eleven four. All anyone against? Four. Been approved by 11 to 4. Any abstentions? Right. 11 to 4. All right. All right. So can you just repeat? Okay. Um, can we just see who was against again? I'm sorry. Thanks. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, so we're going to pivot to engineering on page. Page 89. 89. Oh, it is. Thank you. Yeah, only my question. Jennifer. Yes. Okay. So, um, at Shane's suggestion, I'm going to give you a brief overview of each of the department. Um, the engineering department is mostly provides support services to other departments. So, anytime we put in a sidewalk or a street or a um, Reservoir Beach Project, Traffic Light, Russell Common Law, et cetera. Um, they provide the surveying, the mapping, you know, the, the engineering support. So that's primarily what they do. Um, anytime a public utility does anything around them, they're also providing services. And anytime a private contractor does something that's really big, they also get involved. So they're primarily support. Um, they do have this funny little budget, which is, so most of the budget salaries, there's also these expenses, which are fairly modest 
because mostly there are things like materials that are like supplies for map mapping, maintenance, 5202 is always an outside contractor, are uh, small projects that they do where they have to bring an outside surveyor or an outside mapper, um, et cetera. However, there is this funny little thing. So one, one funny little thing is the mobility improvements are not just purely support. That's the money that was voted in the 2019 override to, remember we have voted in additional money for, for mobility improvements and additional money for the, um, the van mm -hmm. that you know, goes around, right? So, um, and I think it started at 50,000 in 2019 and it's increased with inflation. Um, that money is actually for the work. So even though most of this budget is for you know, the support, that's actually for hiring somebody to do the actual work. Uh, the DPW does not actually have control over that particular money. That's done by the town manager's office and the planning department. Um, and they decide what projects they're doing. It's mostly things like working about brick sidewalks, making them safer, either with the infill that makes the sidewalks flat or by replacing brick sidewalks. Um, but there's other projects, but, but the DPW doesn't have that control. Other funny thing about this budget, I found out, <laughs> is that when there's extra money in the budget, they often shuttle money to the maintenance section, even though the maintenance numbers are actually fairly low here. And I still, I've had lots of back and forth with Julie Weinman and not quite sure where they show up in actuals. She does give us, when she gives the report to show us where she's spending money, there it's there. But I'm not sure where it is. And I, I, I'm, I've had like, Five email messages, but I haven't had the phone call that I need to have about where it shows up in actual. It's it's perfectly, you know, it's showing up someplace, but I'm just not sure when we look back. But but the reason the reason it, it may be less relevant to have it in actuals in these budgets is that it's really not a continuing expense. So the most recent amount of money that was spent, that was money that that had been you know, left over from other projects, was the um, Russell Field Common Lot. It was about two hundred fifty thousand. That they, that they just encumbered that, that they've spent it all. Um, so there are big projects like that that somehow sometimes get put into this, this category. Because again, 5202 is these outside contractors for, for things. That is all the information I have. Okay, uh, Annie and then Charlie. So, okay, let me make sure that I understand what you're saying, Jennifer. They didn't spend, they didn't like squirrel away in the maintenance budget for 10 years. No. That's what common lot. No. You're just saying that the engineering costs for an outside contractor to assess work at Russell Common Lot. No, it's this is the thing. That this is it's actually the work to do the work. It's not just the well, engineering work. The work at the Russell Common Lot. Right, but you then said it cost two hundred fifty thousand dollars Right. But, but, so it would, wouldn't have been in an operating budget. Right. I, I thought it would be an actual some some place. Uh, that may be my confusion. Yeah, I don't I don't think we would ever spend two hundred and fifty thousand dollars on a maintenance project that wasn't capitalized. So um, I think maybe that's it, it had it no, it's not in the capital budget. Um but then it wasn't two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So it's in Julie's actuals if you look at them. They're, they're right there. But I can get more clarity on this. Actuals in what year? This is uh, the 2020 year. 22. $25,000. FY22. And they spent $250,000, but they didn't spend it in 5202 because it doesn't show up here. Well, here's the problem also. There's questions about when the money is encumbered and there's questions about money, when the money is. I get that. But yeah. Eventually, if it's encumbered, it's yep. going to show up in this line. And we budgeted $25,000 yep. in 2023, so they cannot spend money that was not budgeted in that Well, line. that's what I'm, I'm wondering well, about. Well, they can and spend money that's budgeted in another line. Well, they, yeah, I mean, he has, yeah, I mean, Mike has, has authority to move things around. So you can certainly spend money that is budgeted. And they do. And they do, right. I mean, so I'm that's, sure they do, but I yes. guess what I'm saying is let's not confuse ourselves. I don't think it was spent in this line, unless it was drained from somewhere else. It was it was brought from some, um, some money left out from other places. That's exactly what else. All right. Well, then yes. you need accounting of it when you state. But it was it, it was in the in Julie's accounting of actuals. It's then in Julie's this accounting line. of actuals because two hundred fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money. I agree. Let me see. Where's where's I'm trying to find the uh, 
Ashley's but but that, that amount of money is found in other DPW. But it's from other things. It's, it's, right. it's, it's something I they have. I see where it shows up in the actuals and how it was moved, Chris. It, no, it just doesn't make sense to me that we would just I'm just trying to think. fund $200,000 so without being clear about how it's going. Okay. I mean, I spent money. I guess it's not our business. I guess it's in here. All right. It seems odd. I mean, you're familiar with the budget, so tell me if I'm off of our Well, right. like we, we, in the highway budget, we've got this huge budget. Yes, it's a huge We're budget. There, there $150,000 sliding right. around would make sense, but right. not here. Here it is. Yep, it's in, yes, right here. 254022 actuals. Actuals for this line in this budget. Yep. Exactly. Engineering. Yep. Yep. In the twenty-five three seven is in this one. So the, the way the reason the reason that it is confusing is that this is actual invoices paid versus where it was encumbered in the budget, and that that's might been be an different. issue for a couple of years, now. and that might be different. Um, but what I don't know is that as this all settles down. Where do we see this in the actuals in the budget? That's what I, I'm, I'm not well, sure. We're going to see it on the line that the comptroller accounts for it on. Yep, and that's the line. But it's then not in our budget. Either, that's the line. I, I agree. That was my confusion. Yep. Yep. That was exactly what I was, I kind of frustrated. I don't, I don't know how that's going to make any sense. But okay. Um, I, I'm also confused about why the mobility improvements is in this budget if they don't have control of it. So that's the whole thing. It feels like this budget is salaries, the very tiny amounts of money that they need to do their yeah. work that they just oversee lots and lots of different departments, and then these weird things that are thrown in. Like that's very much what this budget looks like to me. But, okay, let me actually, can I, I want to mention another big picture thing is that we, when we were going through these budgets in general, we were very frustrated with how things were described, right? Because I mean, maintenance, it's just maintenance. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't spell it out. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's a long time. Ago. Apparently, Ida Cody, 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 Cody yeah, um, is also has been frustrated by this and is very much interested in redoing these numbers and, and, and yeah. descriptions. To present as something that is a lot more yeah. perspicuous. Yeah. The um, problem is that to change a line in the county, to change a line in the general ledger is a big deal. Right. And she's doing it step by step. So right. Right. And we are looking at the object level and right. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So it's a database problem and the names are going to be weird until you get one of our problem. suggestions is that I think that a mm -hmm. finance subcommittee should be involved in in this project. In, yeah, you don't think so. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I do, and I, I we've talked about this. This is okay. I mean, I'm, I'm new this. to this, so I'm not. Yeah, yeah. But right mm -hmm. now, the you, know, you got to go through the budget first, okay. and then my thought is, when we've gotten through the budget cycle, we can step back and say this whole reporting thing mm -hmm. needs improvement. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, no, and yeah, no, 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 certainly not. What, what, what do we later. need? Yeah. What do we need? Yes. What can they give us? Um, and I, I think at the end of the day, it's beneficial for everyone because we have all, yep, the last yes. several weeks or months gone back and forth and back and forth Absolutely. and back and forth with our department heads yep. and Julie and Ada about tell me what what is this? Yeah. What's the, show me how it where, where it went. So we get to the this comfort point of okay i get it i'm comfortable with this, this is what i'm going to recommend right, right. um I mean, but it takes a lot it's of been time a, a lot of i would time. say it's been a problem for 20 years absolutely yeah absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. but yeah. we've got yeah it's time to fix this yeah. and it may yeah. not be fixable in one year but i think we we've got to start yes yeah so we agreeing on the right standard part. makes sense and giving our input but we can't actually go name the lines for you though she's got to do it rebecca and charlie and then grant Thank you. Hopefully this is a straightforward question, but the offsets on this particular budget? Um, I, I think all the offsets are one and zero with a couple of exceptions. I think that's true here. Thank you. I think it's all one and zero. Charlie? There's only a couple of exceptions. Uh, yes, so. thank you, Madam Chair. I have uh, uh, two complaints here um, that I think, again, need to be addressed with uh, town management. First is, as I understand it, if this indeed is the money that was 
um, earmarked by the select board in the 2019 override um, for mobility improvements, which was positioned as a, I'll use the term SOP, Mm -hmm. to the seniors in order to get the seniors to vote for the override, mm -hmm. okay? It should be increasing 2.5% a year. Oh, it is increasing. It's, it started at 50 is what I was told. It doesn't look like it's increasing 2.5% a year. Okay, I was told 60. they started at 50. And well, that's increasing. we got three years. But you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I see that. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, again, point. it's either gross misreporting in the, in the budget or yep. we're not doing it. Good awesome. point. Good point. And the second thing is... Uh, I'm not sure, but I thought I heard somebody say that we didn't spend the money and it goes into some other budget when it's not spent. If this money, I mean, there was a commitment made. We got, we got ourselves worked up into a ladder over Minuteman because they made a commitment and didn't live with it. Yeah. Here we made a commitment to the voters as a town to spend this money on mobility improvements mm -hmm. and we're not doing it. But it's, but, the, uh, I know this because, because they I are spending money on it. Yeah, we I, are. I know so, this because I suffered through this for 12 years. We spent 115000 last year, mm -hmm. FY22. And some of this shows up in our In that budget? Yes. Yeah. So but that's not even money that was encumbered in a different budget. But that's the, that's the like, actual money that was paid or paid out. Yeah, some of the mobility improvements no, 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 no. is in this budget engineering and also shows up in highway historically. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we're we spending more. Well, I, mean, I know we have, we, had a, we have a mobility number in the or something like this in the uh, capital budget. Um, yeah, there's there's several kinds of mobility. So there's certainly the in the highway budget, if when I understand the capital, are the um, the ramps and sidewalks, right? That's this money actually doesn't pay for that, from what right. I understand. This pays for additional mobility improvements. Um, and the only thing that was mentioned to me specifically were bricks, but there might be other projects as well. But it's not it's not the 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 um, handy rock sidewalk thing that that is all in capital for sometimes occasionally small projects in, in highway. Do you have a but I think it's a good point that's an increase. Well, and what we're spending on. I mean, you said the money was left over and they put it somewhere else. So no, I'm sorry, that was about other was either left over or was not left over. No, I'm sorry. That, I'm sorry. I was confusing. That was um, what I, I was saying about the, the maintenance projects was money that was left over in budget, other budget items in the DPW. Because Mike has discretion, not on not mobility. But I understand the mobility is being spent. It looks like it is. Do you have another question, Charlie? No, no. Thank you. Grant? Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, I can appreciate. Um, the fluctuation and the stuff in the budget, and the DPW and boards, so they're very good at this sort of stuff. So, um, had lots of practice by him. Um, and the stuff with the actuals, and it's funny that the budget book actually is both very different than what you get to see, but that's how it works. Um, but in mobility improvements, I have two questions about that. One is the is the actual is 1,021, and then it is spent exactly 60,000. 60, and is that accurate? Right, no, it, it right. This is, is, it, is it's, it's not, not it's not accurate, and right, and okay. it's not what we were told it's not as accurate. Um, and it was, it, it was a placeholder that, I mean, the money that, that was budgeted here actually gets spent in a different year. So the, Actuals look small, but it but the mm -hmm. commitment and encumbrance is spent in the last later, year later. So that I can appreciate that that usually happens, but what happens is that they actually fluctuate. Yeah. Um, they don't magically. It, so the 1,000, understand it might be a placeholder, except that it's not supposed to be a placeholder since 2019. I think. Right. That, and the 60,000 looks to need to be an actual. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I agree. Um, what I can say is Mike Rademacher didn't have much information about this budget item because he doesn't control it. And I didn't talk to anybody else. We, you know, we had some back and forth with Julie, but. I've, I've had some similar responses to a lot of things, but yeah. by the way, at least you've gotten some information. I haven't gotten any information yet about this <laughs> stuff, but, um, but back to mobility improvements, it does seem misplaced in this budget, but 
And maybe that's the answer to the question. I think they just threw it there because it didn't go anywhere else. That's my guess. <laughs> well, okay, that's good speculation, but is there some way, I mean, I, I, that's not even, I mean, maybe that's a policy thing, but I'm questioning of what, what are we actually spending the magic 60,000 on if it's designed, I, I, I heard bricks, but bricks are materials and bricks go, you know, might be built to the people actually doing the work. I, I thought engineering is doing the mm -hmm. doing way with design. Bricks. So they designed the so way. Here's, yeah, again, yeah. yeah, so, so but, here, but, but here, it's, what what's the difference between that budget item is that it pays for the actual work, not just the engineering, right? So unlike the rest of the engineering budget, it's mostly engineering. It's the mapping, it's the surveying, it's that stuff. But that that one actually pays for the work. I can go back, um, not not to Mike, but to someone else and find out specifically what we spent in last year's. I'll do that. Yeah. What, what, well, what was it spent on? Yeah. And what did mm -hmm. they do? Did they, I'll go to did they do a design about how to replace the yeah. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Al, are you finished, Grant? Yes, thank you. Al? Well, I guess I was just commenting on, on it, it seemed to me it makes sense for the 60000 to be on the engineering work because for the things like ramps and stuff, and there's a lot of engineering that goes into it. Right, right. But the only difference is. It's usually done in conjunction with rebuilding a sidewalk, so the incremental yeah. cost. The only difference is that, it, low, again, the it was a different, it's a different kind of thing because most of their budget is the work of planning and surveying and stuff. Yeah. Whereas this is actually hiring a contractor to do the work. That's the only difference. That's the difference. It's actually putting the yellow thing. It's not the yellow thing. Remember, it's a different kind of work, but it's mobility work that's different. Yeah. And presumably supervising that actual. Yeah, they're work. still they're still doing the planning and everything like that for sure. But but here in this in this line is the work to hire the contractor to do that. Because when they actually put in the ramps and, and, and things like that, it's part of a bigger project. And it's hard to believe they actually I don't know if cost. if the particular projects that they're doing are prior finger projects because they're not they're not the ramps. There's something else. Okay. Well, yeah. I guess we need more but so I, we need more information. Mm -hmm. uh, I can, I'll go back. I'll go to the manager. Yeah. Any other questions? Should we um, put this aside? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. You didn't miss it. Okay. <laughs> I think we might skip ahead just to give Jordan a chance to do, do a presentation. So I think we're going to jump ahead to, uh, what did we say, motor equipment. Yep. And that's 103 in the hard copy and close to that, maybe somewhere else. So again, 103, motor equipment repair. 112. All right. Uh, all right. Um, so just at a very general level, uh, motor equipment repairs, what they do, um, they, uh, they maintain a fleet of 150 town vehicles and they are tasked with doing preventative maintenance, um, including tire management, um, they do brakes, oil, transmission, etc. Um, and, uh, you know, they, I think, um, Part of uh, the facilities that will be upcoming um, in the future is uh, they want to work to get a more, uh, they want to implement a fleet management software so they can better track the repairs and everything that's being done to the fleet that they're currently managing. Um, and uh, most of the work that they perform, a they are able to perform in-house using the mechanics and the tools that they do have. Uh, um, some of the more, uh, some of the more complex things that are uh, related to like say the computers and the cars those are things that need to be taken to uh, dealerships that have the expertise and the, uh, the ability to work on some of these things um, kind of a bigger picture items uh, something to think about for the future of this um, future of this department and for this budget is just what kind of you know, with the rapid changing technology that we're seeing in vehicles, um, you know, it's going to take a lot of modernization, and making sure that this department does have the tools to be able to work on the, um, you know, the electric vehicles of the future. I'm told that most of, um, I'm told that in general, they are able to do, again, most of the very basic repairs, but again, as we continue to move towards EVs in the future, this is certainly going to be something that uh, that we should pay attention to from a budget perspective. There's going to be a lot of additional trainings that that, um, that will be eventually required for our mechanics to be able to service 
um, the vehicles. So um, going down the line, so uh, salaries, um, just modest increase. Um, the overtime and double times uh, and the out of grade pay. So these are all uh, overtime and double time, um, what's budgeted that's based on a five year historical average. Um, getting to what's really most uh, notable, I think, about this budget is if you go to the, um, the out of grade pay for fiscal year 22. Um, normally, it's not, it's not normally that high, but there was an extended absence um, from the supervisor. So that did require somebody to work out of grade for um, a significantly long period of time than what they normally would do. Yeah. Um, uh, so maintenance, um, it's level funded, um, training, uh, again, level funded. I did ask, um, you know, fiscal year 22, um, you know, the spend was significantly under the seven grand. Um, I asked uh, the director about this and um, uh, they've mostly maintained, they've used the, this, uh, this line item to maintain the certifications that their mechanics currently have. Um, I asked if it was going to be something that they were going to spend the full seven amount. He says that um, he intends uh, for the staff to get advanced training and to be more orientated with uh, more of the technology on the vehicles that they currently serve. So he does plan on using um, more of the training budget that he has previously. And the other supplies um, is for all of the tools, all of the parts, and everything that uh, that they use to service their vehicles. Um, and uh, this is all offset by the water and sewer. Um, and uh, again, really no, um, no, no significant changes in, uh, in uh, personnel. Are you recommending that we approve the budget? Um, the taxation total is set for seventy two ninety five. Uh, correct. I'm recommending uh, we uh, approve the budget as presented. And is there a second? Second. All right. Questions. Topher. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that they may be getting the fee management software. We well, would like to, I guess. Yeah, and I think that's. Um, we'll be discussing that more in the facilities budget. Um, I think that. Uh, I think that there was a dis there's been a discussion um, to have uh, the fleet management be more townwide. Um, that would encompass more than just the DPW vehicles. Yeah, I was wondering if it was going to end up in the IT budget. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> um, my understanding was it's going to be in facilities. The questions, uh, Dean. So, I guess part of comment. Um, so I agree that a fleet management software is important and has a lot of great value to it. Um, I also know that for like a period of 18 months from April of 2017 to September of 18, I was on the capital planning committee and the same DPW director talked about getting a fleet management software. So he's, he's, he's talked about it for like a solid five years. Um, he's never done it. And I think we're probably in a lot of times with those large software packages, um, they go through the capital budget. And, and look, I'm probably being a mean when I said that, right? I get it. They were converting like all of their water meters. It's a, like, you're not gonna launch a second project right behind it, because that would be insane. Um, or concurrently, not behind it, concurrently. Um, I think at some point, as a subcommittee, maybe you all should um, just start like pushing. Like, okay, the water meters are installed. That's nice. That's great. Are they installed? Can I make that up? Let's make it. Let's pretend they're all installed, right? They're all installed. It's time to turn the corner and move to the next project, right? Like, because it's like, you know, because otherwise we're going to be in like 2028 20, and still talking about fleet management softwares and how great they could be. Yeah. And Jennifer and Shane, um, you know, I'm preparing the facilities budget now. And I, I don't recall, did, uh, did the facilities director, I think, did, he mentioned when he had an estimated time for when that was going to come online. It sounded yeah, like it but was we always have to keep in mind how um, up and down the staff staffing of the facility director has been over the last few years, and that it's you know good intentions in lots of different areas have gone by the wayside in that in that area. But we do have a new person. 
he said he's staying. <laughs> like, hopefully that's good, right? Yeah, and Will, um, I wasn't planning on discussing the facilities budget tonight, but I think, you know, a lot of the long range and a little bit of a primer for it, though, um, I think a lot of the initiatives that facilities, um, and again, knock on wood, let's hope that there's uh, some con there's going to be some continu uh, continuity with that department, but he really is, I think, from the conversation that we had, um, really trying to transform that department from a simple facilities department, which, you know, is traditionally has looked out for things like HVAC, building maintenance, um, installing other initiatives um, like that, and really trying to do more actual capital asset management. So um, we'll have a little bit more of a discussion about that when we do the facilities, but I think all of it is sort of intertwined um, in trying to better track um, what the assets of the of, of the town are. Yeah, I, the other the other disruption in the last few years actually has also been the building of the new facilities department, you know, in Grove Street, right? So so various people are working out of weird places right now, and so, but um, but I do think you have a good point of, of pushing this. Yeah. Yeah. I will say, having done this budget for many years, when I started this budget, the the budget numbers fluctuated wildly, one year after another after another, and I would say, what's happening here? I'm heartened that <laughs> there's there seems to be a, you know, the numbers are, are in line mm -hmm. for you know the, the 24 budget and the 23 budget and the actuals and the 21 actuals. So I think that's an improvement. But I do, I do agree with with uh, Dean that we should keep nudging um, DPW if via facilities to 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 stay on top of this. Yeah, Dean, thank you for the question. I'll try um, before uh, uh, before we do facilities. Try to get a better um, feel for when uh, that fleet management software might be up and running. Other questions on motor equipment here. All right, so let's take a vote. Um, I think it's been moved and seconded, right? All right, all in favor of the uh, motor equipment repair budget as printed, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> uh, we have uh, 12 minutes left. Do another division in 12 minutes. I think I could do seven things. Oh, oh yeah. Look. <laughs> uh, so that should just follow uh, subsequent pages. Uh, cemeteries, Mount Pleasant Cemetery, Old Bearing Ground, for the active cemetery, Mount Pleasant, 62 acres, about 200 burials per year, Old Bearing Ground is inactive, historical cemetery of six acres. Um, sort of not much happening. And the sort of the salaries uh, areas here. Um, there is uh, the offset uh, is increasing by thirty thousand dollars. So we asked about that. This is so there's a project some landscaping improvements to the columbarium. Yep. Uh, which I learned is a vault which holds ashes. So we expect this to be a one-time expense, a one-time draw. So there are two funds. There's the, the Lots and Graves Fund and the Perpetual Care Fund. And I'm told by Julie that the um, entirety of the offsets from the Perpetual Care Fund. So that is just sort of that's a big number that, that balances around 8 million, 8.6 million. That's because it's supposed, it's supposed to be there for sort of onto infinity when you're no longer burying people or uh, selling lots. lots. Um, yeah, the maintenance line item increases, uh, yeah, by 30,000, but again, offset by the, the draw there. Um, yeah, not, not much. Uh, 
you make the motion that we approve the budget as printed? I move acceptance of, of the as printed. Second. Second. Any discussion or questions? Uh, Topher and then Charlie. What the column bearing? Where was that accounted for again? So it's a 30,000 bump. Oh, the bump. Yeah. yeah. Um, 